Hi, Todd Dunn here on August 24th, 2018. Today I'm aboard my 1936 uh, powerboat Tortuga because, once again, I'm talking boats. So what I want to talk about today is how well has my Victron 7515 MPPT smart solar charge controller worked. I installed the charge controller in the spring this year and it went active on June 1st, the day we took the boat out of the shed and launched it. So it, the controller has been working for approximately 12 weeks now and what I wanted to do was just a quick summary of how it works, how well it's worked, and basically what I like about it and what I don't like about it because there is one thing I'm not too fond of. Well basically this is an MPPT smart charge controller and it's very fast in its operation. It has a very fast MPPT algorithm and processor in it because when you uh, display the current settings the voltage that the panels are operating at changes continuously from more than once a second. So it's always adjusting things to get the optimum amount of power out of it. Uh, when we pulled the boat out of the shed, the batteries were not completely charged, so the charge controller went into bulk mode almost immediately and stayed there for most of the first couple of days until the batteries were pulled up to full charge. I should say exactly what the rest of the system consists of. On the cabin top here, I have two horizontally mounted 50 watt solar panels that are wired together in series so that under optimum conditions, they're going to run at around 36 volts. And they are providing charge to three group 29 lead acid batteries, each of which is rated at approximately 110 amp hours. So, I have 100 watts of solar to charge 330 amp hours of batteries. And so far it seems to be working very, very well. Of course, this is a power boat and the diesel engine has a 115 amp alternator on it. So that whenever the engine's running, the alternator is providing the primary charge for the batteries. And it will pull them right up to the charging voltage that the alternator set for, which is 14.4 volts. So how does the charge controller work? Well, when the sun comes up, if the batteries are a little bit low, the controller will go into bulk mode and it will stay there and put maximum possible amperage into the batteries until they come up to 14.3 volts, which is what I've set the bulk charging mode to. Then it will go into absorption mode for a little while as the charge acceptance on the batteries decreases and finally will go into float mode and which is set to 13.6 volts. One thing it does when it goes into float mode, it backs off on the amperage that it's sending to the batteries quite dramatically. And typically in float mode, it's running at about 0.2 amps from the charge. When the controller goes into float mode, it really backs off on the amount of current that it's sending to the batteries. It does that by pushing the voltage that the solar panel is operating at up near its upper limit, which will decrease the current output from the solar panel. And most of the time in float mode, it's adjusted the voltage up to the point where the current coming from the solar panel to the controller is only 0.1 or 0.2 amps, and the current going from the controller to the batteries is around 0.4 to 0.5 amps. Depends on the voltage that the panel is operating at, but that's normally up in the 40 volt range. So it's quite a smart controller and the MPPT algorithm adjusts current by changing the operating voltage of the solar panels. Another thing that I was very pleased with is what happens when I start the engine. I used to have a PWM charge controller which would pull the solar panel voltage down to the battery voltage 
and just stay there. When I started the engine, the engine alternator would push the battery voltage up to 14.4 volts, and the, which would cause the PWM controller to allow the solar panel to operate at 14.4 volts, and sometimes a little bit more, and that would tend to push the battery voltage up to the point where the alarms on my uh, electronic system that controls the engine would go off. So what I had to do when I was running the engine with the PWM controller was turn on enough stuff to overcome the current that was coming from the solar panel so that it wouldn't push the voltage uh, of the battery up above 14.4 because whenever that happened this very very loud piezoelectric alarm would go off and it was extremely annoying. Well the MPPT controller does not do that. When the alternator is charging, it takes it up to 14.4 volts. I have my bulk charging voltage set to 14.3, so when the batteries go above 14.3, the MPPT charge controller turns off charging. Effectively, I don't have solar panels when that happens. And I don't have any more alarms, which is a really uh, good thing. I'm very pleased with that aspect of the operation. So, how well has it done? Well, one thing that's happened since, except when we go someplace on the boat, the only uh, draw on the batteries is the bilge pumps, and they only run about 15 to 20 seconds a day, and draw consequently very little power. Um, because of that, the batteries don't get drawn down very much overnight. And they might come down a few tenths of an amp hour. Probably most of their uh, drain is from self-discharge. Consequently, once the batteries got up to full charge, the uh, solar panels and the MPPT charge controller have held them right near 100% charge and the total amount of power expressed in watt hours going into the batteries has averaged approximately 80 to 90 watt hours a day. As I said, that's probably mostly to keep up with self-discharge. And of course, if I come aboard the boat at night and run some things, or I turn the refrigeration on and let it run for a few hours, um, that'll draw the batteries down a little bit, and then the next day, the uh, charge controller will allow more power to go into the batteries. For example, last night, I spent the night on board. I had the refrigeration on all night from about oh, 6 o'clock last night until 8 o'clock this morning. And this morning it was fairly chilly, so I actually turned on the uh, Wabasto uh, diesel-fired heater, which draws about four amps when it's running, and ran it for about an hour and a half. So that, plus the lights in the boat, drew the uh, batteries down a bit. As a consequence of that drawdown on the batteries, so far today, the solar system has put about 200 watt-hours back into the batteries. I expect that the batteries will be fully charged by the end of the day, and we'll be back to only getting 80 to 90 watt hours out of the solar uh, starting tomorrow. So the system has worked very well. The batteries are essentially 99 to 100 percent charged basically all the time and that's going to greatly extend my battery life. The batteries in here now were installed on the boat in 2011 they're flooded lead-acid batteries, they're seven years old, and they're still in good shape because they have had solar charging the entire time that they've been in. So I expect that I will get uh, probably at least 10, maybe 15 years out of those batteries, simply because they seldom get drawn down below about 85%. Okay, let's have a look now at a couple of photographs I took of my smartphone when it was linked to the uh, 
Victron 7515 Smart Solar MPPT charge controller via the Smart Solar's built-in Bluetooth. This picture shows the what the output looks like when the charge controller is in float mode. You can see it's allowing about 5 watts from the solar panel and that is being converted into about 0.3 to 0.4 amps going into the battery. That it, and you notice it's running up near 40 volts. Now, I'm going to go below and turn the refrigeration on so that we're drawing some power and we'll, that will pull the battery voltage down a little bit and we'll see what happens. Okay, I've turned on the refrigeration now and if you look up in the upper right of my phone, you can see it's only about a minute and a half later. And what's happened? Well, the charge controller has sensed the drop in battery voltage, and it has gone from float mode back into bulk mode. And it has upped the output of the solar panel from 5 watts up to nearly around 50 watts. And that has caused it to put out a much higher current and currently it's charging the batteries at about 4 amps which is actually staying a little bit ahead of my refrigeration which draws just over three and a half amps when it's running. So since the sun is out the charge controller will keep up with my refrigeration and uh, won't draw the batteries down at all. And matter of fact, we'll put in a little bit of extra charge and keep the batteries right up at 100%. So I'm really pleased with the way this system operates. Now, let's take a look at the history mode. When you, at the top of the standard status display, there's the word history. If you touch that on the phone, it'll go into a display where it has the last 30 days uh, where it has it will go, it will go into the history mode which displays up to the last 30 days of data of how the charge controller operated it has data for how long it spent in each of the three modes bulk absorption and float it also shows the maximum panel voltage the minimum and maximum battery voltage and the number of watt hours that went into the batteries during the day. So you have a lot of data there. You can really take a look and see just how everything worked. You can also touch any one day and pull up a more detailed display where it'll tell you to the minute how long it stayed in bulk mode, absorption mode, and float mode. And that is a really nice feature, so you can get a good idea of exactly what's been going on uh, with your solar system. The one other number here, right down at the bottom of the display, and that's the total power that's been put into the batteries since the last time the controller was reset, which you have to do manually. It doesn't automatically reset. And that shows, so far this summer, that my solar array has provided me with approximately 9 kilowatts of energy. Okay, that sort of summarizes the things I like about this controller and a little bit about how it operates. And I'm very pleased with the way it operates. There is one thing that I don't like very much though, and that is on the front of the controller there are LEDs that indicate the mode it's currently operating in. They are very bright. During the day, you don't really notice them. But at night, since I have the controller mounted where you can see it from up here in the main cabin, those LEDs are very noticeable. And they can be a little bit annoying to the point where I usually hang my hat on the controller at night to cover up the LEDs so they won't uh, shine in my face right? or as is typical uh, provide me with a blue light flashing on and off into the cabin. So that's the one thing I don't like about the controller. I'd like to be able to turn off the LED display so that I would only see 
uh, status information if I use my phone to check it, or if I turned it back on to have a look at it. But unfortunately, you can't do that, or at least I don't know how to do that. So that pretty much sums up how well my Victron Smart Solar 7515 MPPT Solar Charge Controller has been working so far this summer. I would say it works really well. Okay, thank you for watching. If you uh, found the information I presented today useful, please give me a thumbs up. And I'd also appreciate it if you would subscribe for, to my channel if you haven't already done so. And click the little bell icon to get notifications of when my next video will be up. Okay, thanks again for watching.